says staff made multiple complaints about male juveniles paying closed door visits to McCormick's office. If you're if you're a female staff and you have a male juvenile, you don't go anywhere off camera. That's you know there's certain areas you just don't go. Um, clinicians and stuff. They who did that? Julie. I was not the only one that saw it. Um, it had been reported to Betty several times. The criminal file with all the details of what happened in this lewd conduct case has been sealed by a judge, so we don't know when or where it's supposed to have taken place. There's nothing to indicate yet that it happened at the juvenile corrections facility in Nampa. Now, McCormick left that facility in July, about the time the whistleblower lawsuit was filed. And just after that, the director of juvenile corrections made this unusual move online. She posted on the juvenile corrections website that, quote, I'm confident that our staff and the procedures we have in place focus on the safety and protection of juveniles in our custody and ensure that when allegations of misconduct are brought forward, they are investigated and appropriate action is taken. If it turns out these latest allegations are true and happened at the Nampa facility, Director Herrigfeld may have to explain why whistleblower complaints were not acted on. Now, Judge James Schiller sealed the file on McCormick until she is served with a warrant. Now, in the six days since the complaint was actually filed, that warrant still has not been served. So I'm sure you will follow up on the story we for us. We will have the details when they become available. Thanks, Roland. Former State Senator John McGee served 39 days in jail for disturbing the peace, but it's accusations of sexual harassment that led to a state police investigation and now on your side has obtained transcripts of those ISP interviews. Our Matt Kings live in the studio with those details. Yeah, Michelle, the Ada County prosecutor who handled the allegations said she opted for the misdemeanor disturbing the peace charge because the victim didn't want a public trial where she would have to testify and recount the details contained in these documents. Now we want to warn you much of this is graphic and not suitable for all viewers. Just pull down your pants and give me something to look at. State Senator John McGee allegedly said this to a female assistant while he masturbated in front of her in his locked office. According to the victim's friend, the victim told her she told McGee to stop. And McGee told her, quote, swallow. The victim told police when she left, McGee told her this never happened. Other times, McGee allegedly groped the victims behind, asked her to take off her pants, rubbed his groin against her elbow, and made inappropriate comments about the victim's physical relationship with her boyfriend. Former legislator Janet Kemp told police she'd heard rumor of other possible victims. A statehouse page reported McGee referred to his female staffers as the B-word and was famous for, quote, lingering hugs. Senator Brent Hill praised McGee for his professionalism, but also recalled the disgraced senator always had girls around him. After McGee resigned, Hill says McGee told him, quote, I know I have a problem. This report does contain other allegations against the former senator. We're looking into those as well. Live in the studio, Matt King, Fox 9 on your side. A Canyon County jury is set to begin its third day of deliberations tomorrow in the case against the former county prosecutor, John Bujak is charged with misuse of public funds by a, a public official. The county says Bujak took money from a contract the county had with Nampa City. His trial lasted about a week, and the jury got the case on Monday. They took yesterday off for the election and resumed deliberations today. Bujak faces up to 14 years if convicted. Idaho voters have had their say. And it's three no's on propositions one, two, and three. The students come first, education laws. And today, we talk to both sides about what happens next. Jennifer Awe has the latest in this red, white, and blue report. It was a major victory for those against Idaho's education reform laws. By pushing through these laws, it was against the, the will of the people and the professional judgment of teachers. The governor says this crushing defeat doesn't mean Idaho voters change their political views. I didn't see a, a major character change conservative liberal in the legislature. Becoming the most talked about state issue during the election season, leaders of the Vote No campaign say they learned a lot through Props 1, 2, and 3 about what they want for Idaho students and teachers. We want transparency. We want collaboration. We want input from our educators. In addition to bringing more people to the table, campaign leaders say they want local school boards to make decisions for their own districts. Governor Otter, a major supporter of the students' Come First laws, says he's ready to have that talk. Say what can we accomplish and how 
quick can we accomplish that and who do we have to have in the room to accomplish that? What we need to do is take each problem and sit down and say, what did you like about it? What didn't you like about it? If you had a chance to change it, how would you change it? I think we have a lot of work to do. Jennifer A, uh, Fox 9 on your side. We also tried to contact Superintendent of Schools, Tom Luna, about the failed outcome of the education reform laws on the ballot. And he responded with this statement. I understand Idahoans have expressed concerns, yet I do not believe any Idahoan wants to go back to the status quo system that we had two years ago. We must find a way because our children's future is at stake. Idaho Secretary of State Ben Yasursa says voter turnout statewide was a little less than the last presidential race in 2008, but not by much. Unofficial numbers indicate more than 651,000 voters turned out at the polls. That's about 5% less than 2008. Each county is now in the process of reporting their turnout numbers to the state, and Yasursa says he'll release the official numbers later this month. With the exception of two seats in southeast Boise, the partisan makeup of the new Idaho legislature remains near identical but because of redistricting and retirements we will find a lot of new individuals bringing new interests to the capital that should lead to an unpredictable start to the next session with rookies looking for mentors and direction redistricting also may have altered the regional influence of the legislature more people from the Treasure Valley a little bit also up in Coeur d'Alene fewer eastern Idaho people so what you're seeing in the legislature which is historically been dominated by eastern idaho the leadership has all typically come from eastern idaho now much more influence going to be from the treasure valley but just because they all live in the same valley doesn't mean the legislators necessarily agree fortunately they're gonna have to learn to work together and in a hurry the new legislature faces three crucial issues that uh, we'll need to address rather quickly what to do with this education reform that voters just struck down also no longer can this red state bank on Obamacare going away it's here to stay so does the state expand Medicaid and Idaho is now stuck with an insurance exchange do legislators take a federal one build one at the state level or go private the new legislature must work together to resolve these issues next session. The battle over the Garden City Green Belt bike ban has been going on for more than a decade. And even with the votes that came in yesterday, guess what? It still may not be over. Initiative A, which would have opened up the mile and a half section of Green Belt to bikes, did not pass. But Initiative B did. That initiative says the city would have to bring it before voters if they want to close a section of the Green Belt. The attorney who wrote that says that that means the Green Belt should be open to bikers until the city brings it before voters. But the city now says that initiative does not go into effect retroactively, so it only applies in the future. More trouble for the Napa School District. We've been telling you about the former accountant who says she was fired after raising red flags about where the district's money was going. Now a second person says they were fired after sounding the alarm for questionable financial practices. An employee with the nutrition department came to us anonymously to report his concerns on the styrofoam recycling machine program and the styrofoam trays that were subsequently dumped in the dumpster. He says his higher up suspected that he was the one who tipped us off and he was ultimately fired for it. Tune in tomorrow night as we bring you the full story and the very latest on the Nampa School District budget crisis. Now the On Your Side forecast with Chief Meteorologist Scott Dorval. Well, temperatures today coming down, but still above average. We hit 64 today. Look at the normal high, 53, 11 degrees above average, but not on the 70s like we were back in 1999. And just yesterday, we were at 74 degrees. No precipitation today, but I think that will likely change overnight tonight and into tomorrow. Your sunset now at 528. It is mild, but it is going to get cooler. High temperatures today still only 59 in Ontario. We did get into the 60s through most of the Treasure Valley, near 70 in Mountain Home and Points East. Beautiful today. The sun was shining all day at Twin Falls, 70 degrees. It'll start to change, but it's a slow process. The cooling coming in from the north and from the west. Now, here's the current weather picture. Shows a lot of cloud cover. You see clear skies in Ontario and west of Boise. Mostly cloudy skies. That thin band there, no rain showing up at it yet, but I do believe rain will develop here 
overnight tonight. So I'm going to keep an eye on that. We're also keeping an eye on a nor'easter heading up the coast. That blue is snow. More than 10 inches of snow falling in south central Connecticut and the Jersey coast right on those dunes that were raked by that high storm surge. Winds gusting to 45 to 55 miles an hour. Power outages and now snow covering the entire region. We'll talk more about that storm. That storm has a name. That's significant. Going to talk about why that storm has a name coming up. Plus, our weather tomorrow, <laughs> scattered showers and started rain getting in there. About 53 for a high. I just hurt for the people on the Jersey Shore. It's, it, you, That's it's just too rough. injury. Really uh, it, is. Yeah. Not fair. Mm. Well, coming up next on Fox 9 on your side, the president's supporters got the four more years they were looking for last night. But what lies in store for President Obama's second term? We'll take and a look. Still ahead with hits, second straight defeat at the hands of Obama. What's next for the Republican Party in general? Where does it go from here? Roland Ferris. Michelle Edmonds, Chief Meteorologist Scott Dorval, Sports with Paul Gerke. This is Fox 9 on your side at 9. Weather is brought to you by Steve's Hometown Toyota. Try Steve's Hometown Toyota in Ontario. Thursday at 9, Napa schools claimed reusable lunch trays would save money and the environment. Until this whistleblower showed on your side, the trays were actually ending up here. People need to know where their money was going. Now he claims he was fired for exposing the problem. I explained everything. Three weeks later, I was terminated. On Your Side investigates and Thursday at 9 on Fox 9 On Your Side. Download the free On Your Side news app. Search Idaho On Your Side in your app store. Lazy Boy Furniture Gallery's Red, White, and Blue Sale with Veterans Day savings of up to $100 on recliners, up to $200 on sofas, up to $400 on sectionals. Hurry, these savings won't last long. Lazy Boy Furniture Gallery's Live Life Comfortably. Furniture Gallery's Red, White, and Blue Sale with Veterans Day savings of up to $100 on recliners, up to $200 on sofas, up to $400 on sectionals. Hurry, these savings won't last long. Lazy Boy Furniture Gallery's Live Life Comfortably. You're watching Fox 9 on your side at 9. It was projected to be one of the closest races yeah. ever. But instead, of course, it was called hours ahead of schedule. 9.30, right here on yeah. Fox 9. So now comes the challenge for a second-term president. Fox News correspondent Ed Henry has more in tonight's Red, White, and Blue report. As President Obama and his family returned from Chicago after the jubilation of victory, his top allies immediately vowed he'll be willing to cooperate with Republicans on the looming fiscal cliff. I am looking forward to reaching out and working with leaders of both parties to meet the challenges we can only solve together. Reducing our deficit, reforming our tax code, fixing our immigration system. Republicans say they've heard this before, actually at the last victory party in Chicago. While the Democratic Party has won a great victory tonight, we do so with a measure of humility and determination to heal the divides. Last night, the president also revealed he's planning a dramatic move to jumpstart the effort. I also look forward to sitting down with Governor Romney to talk about where we can work together to move this country forward. Except President-elect Obama did the same with Republican John McCain. Just going to have a good conversation about how uh, we can do some work together to uh, fix up the country. Within a year and a half, the president did not seem as conciliatory toward McCain at a health care summit. Let me just make this point, John, uh, because we're not campaigning anymore. The election's over. <laughs> I, um, I, I, they, I'm reminded uh, no, of that every day. Uh, well, I, <laughs> the president has made clear McCain and his Republican colleagues have simply moved too far to the right to work out any deals. The Republican view is the president's idea of bipartisanship is to force them to accept sharp tax increases. And they're also skeptical Mr. Obama is willing to step up with real spending cuts. 
I was interested in, in his remarks last night about saying that the best is yet to come. Well, we would have liked to have seen some of that in the first four years, uh, but uh, maybe, maybe he really is serious this time. Another major stumbling block may be the investigation over the terror attack in Benghazi. McCain and Republican Lindsey Graham have been pressing for answers and have accused the White House of stonewalling. On the fiscal cliff, Vice President Biden told reporters today the White House now has a mandate on tax policy. Republicans may have other ideas. At the White House, Ed Henry, Fox News. Only hours after his re-election, the president reached out to key congressional leaders from both parties. Now, the Obama camp says the commander-in-chief called House Speaker John Boehner and Senate Republican Leader Mitch McConnell. He also phoned top-ranking Democrats. According to the White House, the president talked about the agenda for the rest of the year and also the message that he believes voters sent last night on the need for parties to work together. National TV ratings for last night's election are not as record-breaking as they were for the president's first victory four years ago. Today, the Nielsen Company said almost 67 million viewers watched election returns, but that number was 71 and a half million back in 2008. And as networks called state after state for either President Obama or Mitt Romney last night, one state just too close to call, and it still is tonight, in yeah, fact. Yeah, it is. A state that's no stranger to election <laughs> night controversy, in fact. John Zarella has much more. Win. He's ahead of the uh, popular vote. So there it was, CNN anchors in front of the map of the nation. Right now, it, it looks like it's still very close. But Behind like them, all blue states and red states, except down there. See it? The one yellow state in the bottom right? Is that Florida again? It didn't matter in the final outcome, but here was Florida a dozen years after the infamous butterfly ballot and hanging chads, once again too close to call, once again long lines. Even the president, during his victory speech, threw a little zinger. I want to thank every American who participated in this election. Whether you voted for the very first time or waited in line for a very long time. By the way, we have to fix that. In Miami-Dade County, the state's largest, people were still voting as he took the stage. Some precincts didn't wrap up until 1.30 in the morning, six and a half hours after the polls closed. It's not that there were any problems or, or glitches, which is the word that's commonly used. It is not about that. It's about the, the volume of paper that we're processing. That is true. Statewide, there weren't any major technical hiccups. The biggest problem was the ballot, the longest in state history. It was a combination of a lot of things. An overly long ballot, which took about 30 minutes to vote. New precinct locations because of redistricting and having to choose new precinct locations. Some voters aren't buying it. Everybody's trying to do the best they can, not to have the best election, the fairest election, but to screw the opposition. Florida's election flub didn't just start on Tuesday. It started with early voting, reduced by the state legislature from 14 to 8 days. Republican Governor Rick Scott refused appeals to extend it, something both his Republican predecessors, Jeb Bush, and Charlie Chris did. Monday, the governor was asked, was it political? Here's what's political. I want everybody that has a right to vote to go register to vote. I want everybody to get involved in campaigns. And I want everybody to go out and vote. 4.4 million people have gotten to vote in our state before Election Day. At the end of the day, more than 8 million Floridians did vote. We can't say exactly how many because, well, they're still counting. Unbelievable. Yeah. We'll see what happens. So as Scott mentioned just a little while ago, that Northeast is now gearing up for a second storm in just as many weeks. So rough for those folks over there. This time, of course, it's not a hurricane, but that's of little comfort for the people still struggling to recover. The storm making its way up the coast now comes as more than half a million people still are without power, and it brings with it the fear that that number is just going to rise. A lot more difficult. The sand is getting heavier. The guys that are working outside, it's difficult to work because it's cold. Uh, they're getting wet. Not enough ponchos, not enough bags. We can use a little bit of help.
You sure could. And when New Jersey Governor Chris Christie was told about the second storm, he reportedly asked in frustration, ah, oh, what's next? Oh, so this most recent storm also marks a change for the Weather Channel. It does. The cable network has actually decided to start naming the storms, much like they do the hurricanes. So we wanted to bring Scott in on this conversation. Scott, when this all started, I came to you and said, what do you think? Good idea? Bad idea? It's the Weather Channel now, mm -hmm. not the weather service. That's right, and I'd mentioned to you, I said, you know, when I was back in Connecticut, a station in Connecticut had started naming storms back in the 70s. Uh, they did for a while anyway, and I think that's kind of where the idea came from. And, and you know, when you think about it, it really is a good idea, and probably the reason we have not seen an organized naming of the systems, because there's a national hurricane center that coordinates everything for hurricanes and tropical systems, but there's no national winter storm center to coordinate this with all the states in different forecast regions. So the Weather Channel has taken it upon themselves to do this. It's probably not a bad idea at all. And so that major storm heading up the East Coast, that is Athena. This is the list of names, the winter storm names for 2012, 2013. As I've uh, gone through all the information, uh, the Weather Channel tends to weight things in the east a little bit, where all the major storms are going up the coast, the center part of the country as well. We'll see if they name any of the major storms that may be pushed into the northwest. When many times storms can hit up in uh, northwest Washington with over 100 mile an hour wind so we'll see if they name those as well so they can track but the key is now you kind of give a, a storm a personality plus you can now keep track of it and when you're talking about it and planning you can know exactly what you're talking about and not getting confused with other systems that's the main reason they're doing it hmm. it seems to be a good idea when we come to television news that we all kind of have the same name instead of these kind of superfluous it's the i don't know christmas storm the after christmas storm but the still it begs the question how exactly to determine which one are going to get yeah, a name and which ones well, and they do have a categorizing of it of, of wind and snow and ice the one okay. that they very carefully thought about so we'll see how it works out this year That'll be so here comes Athena yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. All right, Scott, we're going to check back in with Scott in just a moment for his full weather segment. And still ahead, we've seen what's in President Obama's immediate future, but what's next for the Republican Party? And now here's tonight's Pump Patrol. Head to the Maverick on Federal Way to fill up for three fifty three dollars a gallon. And to find the cheapest gas in your neighborhood, just go to IdahoOnYourSide.com and click on the Features tab. Buy a truck, get a gun. It's back and bigger than ever. The fourth annual Bucks and Trucks sale at Mountain Home Auto Ranch is on now. Check out all the deals and details at GoAutoRanch.com. Mountain Home Auto Ranch. Exit 95 Mountain Home. Next two and a half men. I'm getting married on June 26th. It's the end of an era. That means no matter how easy you are, I can't sleep with you. I can. I'm Alan. Next two and a half men. Weeknights at 10 on Fox 9. Seeing orange? Buy your Idaho million dollar raffle ticket and you could be on the road to riches. I like to make note of every time my mind's been blown. Nice. First was being born. Every other time it's been here, it's on. Yeah, I know, man. It is such a good sandwich. 54! The new premium chicken lineup featuring the Asiago Caesar chicken sandwich. This is how you Sonic. It's no, no November at Internet Auto Rent and Sales. It's time to say yes to no. You'll pay no money down, no payments for 90 days, and save thousands because you'll pay no new car depreciation. And that's no joke. Internet has the largest selection of like new vehicles in the area. Those in the know say no to new car depreciation. Why pay the difference if you can't tell the difference at Internet Auto Rent and Sales? Match told me exactly the mattress I need and the mattress that my husband needs. And now when you wake up, it's fresh, invigorating, and healthy. That's it. Thanks to Mattress Land Sleep Fit Center. Cool. Get into Mattress Land Sleep Fit Center now. I am so loaded. I'm totally feeling it. This loaded breakfast sandwich is awesome. <laughs> am I tripping? Or is that Jack Box? You're not tripping. I'm here, and my loaded breakfast sandwich is just loaded with country grilled sausage, bacon, ham, two fried eggs, and melting cheese on toasted sourdough. You can stop pretending. The only thing you're feeling is full. I am so loaded! <laughs> That's the sausage. Thanks for your business. For Emmy Award winning news coverage, watch Fox 9 on your side at 9. The On Your Side Forecast with Chief Meteorologist Scott Dorval.
Temperatures are starting that uh, stage stepping going on down uh, from the 70s as we had yesterday down to the upper 30s by Saturday. Today, I went for 65 for the high temperature. My three degree guarantee, we were at 64 degrees. So right there in the mid 60s, tomorrow we'll drop back into the 50s. I still think we're going to see sunshine tomorrow as well as seeing some showers around. Been watching this band of clouds. This is a line right here. It was pretty much right across southwest Idaho through the day today, making it mostly gloomy. It has shifted a little further to the south, but I think it's going to start to migrate back to the north. And I can watch this back edge here as we look go through time. If the clouds are were lighter gray, now the white showing up. This is thickening in here. Radar still not picking up anything, but uh, there's not the best radar coverage over here. I think we'll start to see a band of rain develop, showers, that by early morning before sunrise will shift right through Boise and then redevelop over the western valley. So I don't expect a lot of rain in the Treasure Valley. Earlier computer charts are saying we would get a significant amount up to a half inch, but I don't see that happening. Let's jump ahead now and take a look at uh, Winter Storm Athena right here tracking slowly to the north. Earlier we had sustained winds in Nantucket right out here at 50 miles an hour gust just under hurricane force. Just amazing. This blue is all snow, heavy snow at the rate of two inches of an hour. Parts of New Jersey, again, western Connecticut getting hammered now six to ten inches of snow let up near a foot in some locations. This will only slowly move away. Worst case scenario as far as the positioning for this force for snow because it's just far enough west to drag cold air all the way to the coast. And so New Jersey continues to see that issue there. These are sustained winds right now. Still at 43 out of the northeast there. Sustained winds with gusts at least 10 to 15 miles an hour higher than that. Temperature wise, upper 40s to low 50s tomorrow. By Friday, we drop to the lower 40s and Saturday, we're back into the 30s. So right now in the 40s, clear skies to the north. It's 30 in McCall right now. And again, we'll see that cloud cover as it tracks onto the north here. It will build and start to develop that rain and snow overnight. The real cold air, unsettled weather. Friday night and Saturday, this is going to drift overhead. Won't bring a lot of clouds, but there's a chance of snow flurries on Friday. Uh, we'll get a lot of sunshine mixed in. And on Saturday morning, there's still a chance for snow showers and real cold weather. This is that shift on the future cast, bringing us some rain showers. Just briefly to tomorrow morning, and then by uh, Thursday morning, look at this, we're talking precipitation pushing all the way uh, to the north here. Uh, that's actually Thursday later in the day. That computer chart there was off a little bit. But it looks like we'll continue to see some sunshine come in later in the day. But on Friday, there's a possibility of bringing a little wrapping in a couple of snow showers. You see the blue around here? A few flurries could be around on Friday. And a Saturday morning, we're showing a chance of some snow showers. It's going to be real cold on Friday and Saturday, but we're going to see a good deal of sunshine mixing in. Once we get in north of the jet stream here. This is a pool of cold air that'll just kind of sweep right on over us and slowly move through with a chance of snow showers. Mountains will get some snow, not a lot, but a few inches in the ski areas and it will be bitter cold. We're talking weekend low temperatures in the McCall area, 10 to 12 degrees. So we're talking real cold weather coming in. My on your side forecast for the Treasure Valley in the 40s. I've got periods of rain. It's not going to be as bad as this. I need to update this. I think a best chance for some morning showers and then it may end up being just partly cloudy most of the day. So I don't think we're going to have a lot of rain during the day tomorrow. Keep that in mind, but still cooler. Rain snow mix in the mountains at times, trending towards snow later in the day as the snow levels drop. But I don't expect a significant amount of precipitation. Computer charts say maybe an inch in parts of Long Valley. One to three inches of snow possible with a winter weather advisory in effect for the East Central Mountains. And the Magic Valley, a little milder further to the south, 57 in Twin. Mostly cloudy skies. There could be a shower or two mixing in. And we may get some gusty winds developing during the day day as well. Here's my on your side extended forecast. Lots of question marks about how much precipitation we get, but one thing's for sure, the temperatures will keep dropping 39 on Saturday. Could be a couple snowflakes blowing through the air here on Friday, maybe Saturday morning, but generally a lot of sunshine developing with those puffy clouds over the weekend, just cold near 40 degrees, lows in 20s, 25 degrees on Saturday morning. And uh, I think this might even be 24. I might need to adjust Sunday mornings. It's just going to be cold right through the upcoming weekend. And notice next week, it doesn't warm up all that much, staying in the mid-40s. Now, that is some chilly weather coming in. Oh, my word. Are we ready for this? Well, you are because Scott put up his Christmas lights today. Smart man. Okay, now. Meteorologist. <laughs> he knows when the weather's changing. True, it's warm. One of the main re reasons is, is I put lights on the, you know, you put them on the front of the, uh, the house. I haven't yeah. done that yet. And so you got to get the right amount of lights. And then late in the season, 
all the lights are gone, yeah. and you can't mismatch those lights. I think lights. it's because it's wrong. turning colder tomorrow, and right? I don't like the cold <laughs> and the fingers. <laughs> Wait like me until it's all icy out, and then climb Tell the me how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks, Scott. Thanks, Scott. So the two big questions, of course, facing the Republican Party tonight. What went wrong, and where does it go from here? Yep. Fox News correspondent Carl Cameron takes a look. Mitt Romney's family surrounded him on stage after he graciously conceded a defeat he did not see coming. I so wish, I so wish that I had been able to fulfill your hopes to lead the country in a different direction. There were weaknesses in Romney's run and the president exploited them. Perhaps the low point for Romney was the surreptitiously videoed and infamous 47% remark. 47% of Americans pay no income tax. Romney did not match Democratic attack ads over the summer designed to negatively define his business career. Hundreds of plants, factories, and stores were shuttered. And it took a toll. In his self-described must-win state of Ohio, Romney's loss was in no small measure due to a slow response to Democratic attacks on his opposition to the auto bailout. The Obama campaign micro-targeted specific voting blocks in key battleground states. The Romney camp admits underestimating the president's organization and support. I have never wavered in my support of comprehensive immigration reform. Romney's defeat has already started the GOP debate about better courting minorities, women, and younger voters. Exit polls show Romney got clobbered 71% to 27 among Latinos, the fastest-growing minority in the country. The president again won more than 90% of black voters, and the GOP's gender gap disadvantage remains. The president carried women 55 to 44, and among younger voters, Obama won 60% to 37. Campaign spending was about even, but Romney's social media and internet campaign paled by comparison to the president's. The high point of Romney's bid was his winning performance at the first debate. You've been president four years. You said you cut the deficit in half. It's now four years later. We still have trillion dollar deficits. Exit polls say Romney won on jobs and the economy. Some say he waited too long, just the last three weeks, to court moderate swing voters with bipartisan rhetoric, which some insiders had pushed for sooner. At a time like this, we can't risk partisan bickering and political posturing. Our leaders have to reach across the aisle to do the people's work. For Romney, that was a high note on which to end it, and so he did. Aides say if the president's offer is serious to sit down with Romney and discuss ways to bridge the partisan divide, at the appropriate time, Romney's willing to talk. But for now, he's spending time with family. In Boston, Carl Cameron, Fox News. And coming up next on Fox 9, On Your Side, new details tonight show the deadly meningitis outbreak could have been avoided, but concerns about the company behind the tainted drugs went unheeded. This Civic is great. Maybe I should get one. And they do have a great deal on it. But then again, I waited a few months to buy that digital camera, and the price went down a lot. But since this is a clearance event deal, this car probably won't be here much longer. The 2012 Civic Clearance Event is happening now. Get 0.9% APR for up to 60 months. Now, at your Honda dealer. Want to make Medicare simple? With St. Luke's and Select Health, you'll be covered with clear benefits that are designed to help you get more out of Medicare. A $5 copay for primary care provider visits. $20 a month that I can put towards a gym membership of my choice. Comprehensive prescription drug coverage. And because Select Health is so closely aligned with St. Luke's, you can enjoy an exceptional level of care and value. To attend a free seminar in your area, visit selecthealthadvantage.org or call toll-free at 855-442-9900. It's easy to create your dream home with R.C. Willie, and now it's more affordable than ever. During our Veterans Day sale, you'll find incredible savings on furniture, mattresses, appliances, electronics, and flooring. Dining sets start at $1.99, and bedroom sets are as low as $5.99. This sofa is $3.99. Room groups are as low as $8.99, and there's much more. Enjoy store-wide savings, plus your purchase is in stock for immediate delivery. No down and no interest until 2014. Come into R.C. Willie, where it's your home, your way. This is the sales event you've been waiting for. It's the perfect time to catch a great deal. Make the play for the all-new 2013 Hyundai Santa Fe. More horsepower than the Ford Air. Double the protection with America's best warranty. And Santa Fe costs less than the Honda Pilot and the Toyota Highlander. Right now, score a Santa Fe for just $2.69 a month. Hurry to one of these Ronco Motors Hyundai locations today and catch a great deal while they last. Find the Live Well Network on cable channel 13 and over the air on digital channel 9.2.
The Massachusetts Pharmacy Board fires its director. This after the board says he ignored a complaint that the company linked to a deadly meningitis outbreak was shipping drugs in bulk, and that was a violation of its state's license. And it's our top story in Fox Fitness right now. The New England Compounding Center was authorized only to fill specific prescriptions for individual patients. The Colorado Pharmacy Board filed a complaint about the pharmacy in July. That was before the company shipped out the third batch of tainted steroids. According to pharmacy board members in Colorado, Massachusetts Director James Coffey told them the board would respond after investigating the complaint. But Massachusetts health leaders say Coffey failed to report the complaint to the Department of Public Health. Scientists may have identified a blood marker that shows who is at risk for developing type 2 diabetes years before doctors can even diagnose it. Researchers found diabetic cells have significantly higher levels of protein, which plays a role in the inflammatory process. The team measured these protein levels in non-diabetics three times every three years and found more than a third of those with higher concentrations developed diabetes during the study. A little bit of exercise can add years to your life, according to a new study, just getting your heart pumping can help you live longer, even if you're overweight. In fact, researchers found walking at a brisk pace for only 75 minutes a week added an average of 1.8 years to a person's life compared to those who do not exercise. And when adults up their workouts to at least 150 minutes a week, the level recommended by the Surgeon General, their life expectancy increased by 3.4 years. Coming up next on Fox 9 on your side, the social media attention dedicated to last night's presidential election was unprecedented. You saw it right here on Fox 9. We're going to show you why politics so popular online. Download the free On Your Side news app. Search Idaho On Your Side in your app store. Hey guys, what are you doing? We're going to have lunch together. What are you having? Oh, well, I only had this one. That's so better, dude. Sorry. I swear it was Sally. Yeah, we'll just share it. Get your own Subway steak melt, like the steak and bacon melt. Subway, eat fresh. This Veterans Weekend, Friday. More has two flexible ways to finance interest-free. Your choice. Any bedroom, dining room, or living room interest-free till 2016. Or 0% interest till 2014. A discount equal to sales tax and same-day delivery. Either plan you choose, there's no interest. Veterans Weekend sale prices in every department, plus more kids and teens furniture. More ways to save, more ways to make buying furniture easier. This Veterans Weekend, Friday, at more furniture for less. Check it out. It's Greenwood's famous Idaho snow-predicting snow globe. When it's snowing in here, it's snowing out there. How does it know? It measures the dimensional shift in quantum probabilities and then calculates the outcome. What? It's a good guesser. It's Mystery Discount Week at Greenwood's. Save 10 to 20% off regular prices on ski gear and clothing. And stop in Friday or Saturday for the best deals anywhere on Brundage ski passes. Hey, it's snowing. What do you think it means? I thought we covered this. Greenwood's. For skiers. By skiers. Since 1957. The average American will drive nearly a million miles in their lifetime. That's enough to get to the moon and back twice. If you're going to spend that time on the road, don't waste another day away from the people you love and the places you want to go, only to end up with a vehicle that isn't you. Fifteen minutes from the heart of Boise, you'll find nearly 2,000 new and used cars and over 400 local employees to provide you with the quality you expect and the service you deserve. One of the largest selections in the Northwest, the Idaho Center Auto Mall. Saturday on Fox, Oregon State squares off against Stanford. Then, Colin Klein and second-ranked K-State takes on TCU. Saturday, 2.30 Eastern, 11.30 Pacific, only on Fox. Do you play that game with your kids where you look up in the sky and make, you know, yeah. shapes out of clouds? Time to that? time, yeah. They always end up being dinosaurs at my house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Godzilla would be yeah. one for my son, I think. That's He'd it. love that. Uh, but clouds are on kids' minds an awful lot. Let's oh, check in with Scotty. That's right. We have our weather whisk asking a question about clouds. And this is a question we've had. I haven't had it yet here, but as we've been uh, answering a lot of these questions, but this is one I've heard before. So here's the question from Horizon Elementary. My name is Yanni. I go to Horizon Elementary School. How do clouds float? How do clouds float? That's Yenny from Horizon Elementary School. Yenny, thank you so much for that question. How do they float? 
There's a lot of physics involved in this and science. So we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on here. And basically what's going on is, well, I'll show you this graphic here. Moisture determines the, the uh, cloud base. That's the bottom of the cloud when the air is really dry. Our clouds in the summertime, for instance, when the air is dry, the bottoms of the clouds are really, really high. Notice how in the wintertime those clouds are hanging down lower. When the air is really humid, air has to rise to cool and condense and make a cloud. And so when there's a lot more moisture in the air, the air does not have to rise as far to get the cloud to form. And so it rises to what's called, now Roland, Shell, remember this, the LCL, the lifting condensation level. LCL, <laughs> got it. When you see the bottoms of the clouds all flat perfectly, that's the LCL. Anyway, air, air, airline pilots definitely want to know all about the LCL. They check it out in the morning so they know when the sky's clear when and where clouds are going to form. But I've digressed a little bit here. Let's talk a little bit about clouds and why they float. Well, air has moisture in it. We just don't see it when most of the time, for instance, in this room, the humidity, we, the air has moisture, but we don't see it because it is evaporated. But when we make the air rise, just because it's warmer, basically, and less dense, it will rise and cool and condense, and then we will see the cloud. And so the cloud is air, but it has water in it. And basically what's happening is it's just based, it's just changing its form from air to moisture that's invisible to visible. And so we have a cloud that is just sitting in the spot. If the air sinks here to send this cloud down to the ground, it will warm up and dry out. And so the cloud will disappear. If the air rises, it gets to this point, and now there's not enough warmth to make it rise anymore. So the cloud sits right in the middle. It doesn't have anything to push it up. It doesn't have anything to make it sink. Now it can get more wind to push it up, and then you get a building thunderstorm that gets higher and higher and higher and taller, much like this you see right in here. But if this air were to sink and this cloud were to sink, it would dry out and disappear. And so when it does do that and it happens, you don't see the cloud sinking. So in other words, the cloud floats. <laughs> and that's when go. it becomes a better dinosaur shape. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> right. And it's those cumulus clouds, the ones mm -hmm. that we make the shapes of. Springtime. Thunderstorms. Yes. That's a good it. explanation. Thanks, Scott. You bet. Well,